Kathleen's remains into the church, I'd like to invite you to stand and face the door of the church. In the waters of baptism, Kathleen died with Christ. May she now rise with him to new and everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this day of the Christmas octave, sadly, to celebrate the funeral mass of Kathleen Ann. Dawson Sweeney. We're here to express our condolences also to her family. To you, Ricky, particularly. To Michael, to the whole family. It's not lost 
on many of you here gathered that this comes all too quickly on the back of Kathleen's father's funeral, Frankie, whom we celebrated only too recently. The Christian funeral does not ignore the pain or the loss, but it asks us to take recognition of the hope and the belief that in death life has changed, not ended. And we firmly believe that through the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Heavenly Father that we will see Kathleen again that our separation will be temporary, our sense of exile, transitory, until we are gathered again into God's kingdom. And therefore, to pray worthily for Kathleen Ann, to pray that God grants her forgiveness for any sins she committed in human weakness, and bids her a kindly welcome into his kingdom, let us acknowledge our own sins so as to intercede worthily on behalf of our sister. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You give pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You give light to those in darkness. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Kathleen, who has fallen asleep in Christ, be rejoiced to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to have a seat now as we listen to our first reading. A reading from the first letter of St John. I am writing to you, my own children, whose sins have already been forgiven through his name. I am writing to you, fathers, who have come to know this little one, who has existed since the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, who have already overcome the evil one. I have written for I have written to you, children, because you already know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have come to know the One who has existed since the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and God's Word has made its home in you, and you have overcome the evil one. You must not you must not love this passing world or anything that is in the world. The love of the Father cannot be in any man who knows who loves the world, because nothing the world has to offer the sensual body, the lustful eye, pride and possessions could ever come from the Father, but only from the world. And the world with all its craze for is coming to an end. But anyone who does the will of God 
remains forever. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over. She'd been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God day and night with fasting and prayer. She came by just at the moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they'd done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity and he was filled with wisdom and God's favour was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. My dear brothers and sisters, it was on the 4th of February 1974 that Frank and Anne Sweeney welcomed their daughter Kathleen Anne into the world. She was to form part of Frank and Anne's family, which consisted of Kathleen Anne parents and indeed her brother Michael, to whom we offer our condolences today. Early family life was in Mary Hill, and that's forgivable for an East Ender. It could have been the suicide, so we can forgive folk for being for the north of the city. Um, and it was in Mary Hill and then um, later on to Ronaldsey Street in the Milton. And it was in the Milton where, it's in Augustine's where Kathleen was baptised and went to school in both Augustine's primary and secondary school. I'd like to um, talk about Kathleen's post-school career, but as I young girl, she, at the age of 13 years old, already had a wee job and it was working in an ice cream van at the age of 13. It was only after, Ricky, that I got off the phone from you last night that I realised that I was doing my maths and she was probably working in an ice cream van in the middle of the ice cream van wars. But I'm not going to ask you if, about any involvement or anything like that. It's better for a later day. But after moving on from that, she worked as a care assistant in Stop Hill. And it was while working as a care assistant in Stop Hill that she met you in 1998. And seeing both her potential and her qualities with encouragement, Kathleen went on to study, to do nursing, and indeed 
qualified as an RGN nurse and went on to work in the Beetson. Many of us who have had contact, I know people who work in the Beetson, it's a very, very challenging, very challenging and um, dedicated um, and in particular front of the NHS. There's maybe a bit of a double whammy because being impacted not only by experience with the work of the Beats and but also COVID, we know how the folk working the Beats and are impacted at this time. My wee sister works the Beats and as I was saying to Ricky yesterday, so I know the the qualities that are required of empathy, of love and concern for those who frequent the Beats and and those are qualities which I'm told Kathleen had in abundance. You met Kathleen in 1998 and it was in the 14th of August in the year 2000 that you were married in St. Teresa's by Father Tommy Henry. As fellow priests call him Tubby Henry for, for other reasons, but I've just realised this has been streamed and you might hear that. But anyway, but Father Henry, and I can imagine that he, he's a very good shepherd of souls, Father Henry, and I'm sure it was a, a lovely um, marriage celebration. In describing Catherine's personality, your words were outstanding care for others, looking out for others. Many of you will be here and recognise many of the faces. Um, I could probably say the same old faces without being, um, without being taken to task of it, but it's the same faces from Frank's funeral not that long ago. And that is where there is some of the association with Frank's interests were indeed Kathleen's interests. Ten years ago, Kathleen had to take early retirement through ill health. But despite her own challenges in health, she devotedly looked after her dad, visiting him every day. And indeed, they forged a, a, a symbiotic relationship, looking out for each other. And indeed, Frank's interests, one of them was with the Knights of St. Columba. And I'm delighted to see such a good representation of the Knights here today. Because I think that sums up some of the relationship of, of the, 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 the Knights. It's, the, it's, a, it's a family thing. Part of Frank's great interest was indeed to his cultural, religious heritage in Ireland. And indeed, that meant that Kathleen naturally had great strong links with Ireland and indeed her, what was termed as her Belfast family in New Lodge Road and indeed in Falls Road. And they were a big part of her life. And I'm sure that um, some of the, those people in Ireland that we watching this mass which has been streamed live and we thank you Ricky and, and Michael thank you for your spiritual union with us today as we gather here in St Mary's to pray earnestly for God's merciful judgment and indeed his kindly welcome to Kathleen into the kingdom of heaven. Ricky, you married in the year 2000 to Kathleen, but you didn't have kids of your own. And you said that Kathleen would always, always apologise, but you were quite quick to say that you were her big boy, her Arwen. And indeed, she did. Not only after dad, she devoted her care to you. But indeed, not having a family of your own, 
that allowed Kathleen to devote much of her love and affection to Ava, Natalie and Francis as there as an aunt. Many parts of Kathleen's pastimes was about she enjoyed socialising, she enjoyed her Irish dancing and she enjoyed, she enjoyed a lot of, let's just say, life on the Gallagate, which involved a wee boys club not far along the road from here and indeed it was there and that was where she would enjoy much of her pastime and indeed where her connection with this part of the city came. She had a exercise, I suppose I frequented many churches but in a particular way along with her father to St Alphonsus in the, the, along the, the London Road at the other end of the Calton. And indeed, Ricky, you've been quite insistent that at the end of this Mass there is a, 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 a collection basket for anybody that didn't send, or wanted to give flowers and that, they would, they would actually give a donation to St Alphonsus Church. And, um, I'm happy to do it to facilitate that. Most happy when somebody insists we take money. You know, that's, I totally believe in fleecing the throat, creature. So that's uh, so yeah, you're pushing on open door. But if if you wanted to, in some way, express your condolences by contributing to self Francis, then that that opportunity will be availed to you at the end of mass. Saint Francis of Assisi. Some of you might know that, or so not. But it was St. Francis of Assisi who created the first crib scene. And St. Francis of Assisi created the first crib to try and just serve as a simple reminder of people of what has been done for us. And what is possible through God. God does work in mysterious ways. Who would ever have thought? I mean, you conceive about it. An unmarried mother, 2,000 years ago, in a primitive society, Conceiving a son out with marriage through the work of the Holy Spirit and the announcement of Angel Gabriel. And God and Angel Gabriel saying, Do not be afraid, it will be okay. And Joseph and Mary trust in God. And then what happens is we have a tyrannical despotic king who slaughters all the firstborn males in the land to try and destroy that child and Joseph and Mary flee to Egypt to become refugees and if you ever harbour thoughts about asylum seekers or immigrants and they shouldn't be here See, when you get to the pearly gates, you're going to meet an immigrant, an asylum seeker called Jesus. And you better have your excuses ready. But despite all that, it's okay. Jesus says, trust. And then when we have the scene in today's gospel, when the child Jesus is presented in the temple, and Anna recognises Jesus, but... Prior to the gospel passage we just heard, Simeon tells Mary, a sword will pierce your own heart too. He tells of the disaster that's going to come. And we know of that disaster because Jesus is betrayed, scourged, mocked, crucified and dies. But we're still told it will be okay. And despite three days of desolation, the glory of the resurrection arrives. That death is not the end. That God triumphs 
that Christ has a victory over death. And that is why we're here in this church today. I could go on all day, stories, tell you wee tales, but Kathleen did this, Kathleen did that, did it. I'm sure there's a whole load that I couldn't repeat in the chapel, Ricky. But the fact is, that's not what we're about here in the church. We are here about the future, where Christ constantly tells us, do not be afraid. Where the words of St. Paul, which says, death, where is the sting? Death, where is your victory? We're here as people of faith, because we firmly believe for Kathleen, life is changed, not ended. Becky, you told me you're living three lives now, your own life, Frankie's life, and Kathleen's life. I suspect that when lockdown's over, your life will be becoming a night at St. Columba as well. So I'm just warning you if that's your honour on that. But we're here to say thank you to God, our Almighty Father. We're here like the first people who gazed upon the crib that St. Francis of Assisi created. We look at this simple crib and realise that all that turmoil that this wee family had before them here and all the evil that was against them, death and evil didn't triumph. God's love and mercy triumphed. And we are here to celebrate God's triumph over death. And whilst in the sight of this world, Kathleen is now dead, we pray that in God's sight, she might live forever. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful depart. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Stand now for our prayers of intercession. Trusting in God, our Almighty Father, let us present our prayers and petitions humbly before him with sincerity of heart and confidence. For Kathleen, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord, hear us. For Kathleen, that she may find eternal rest in the presence of Christ, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, yes. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, yes. For the family and friends of Kathleen, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, yes. For all of us gathered here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, yes. For those who are suffering, for the sick, those in chronic pain, especially suffering COVID-19, those who are frightened or lonely, who need the comforting presence of God this day, we pray, Lord, hear us. For those who are in the frontline services during this time of crisis, especially those who are fearful for their own health, that God supplies to them his grace and strength, we pray, Lord, hear us. We remember those who have died, for all who are mourning, who each day we are filled with longing for the presence of someone we love, we pray, Lord, hear us. God, our Heavenly Father, graciously accept these prayers and petitions which we present to you through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We do not accept your sacrifice at your hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Kathleen, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, the Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this off-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he appeared visibly in ours begotten before all ages he has begun to exist in time so that raising up in himself all that was cast down he might restore unity to all creation and call strange humanity back to the heavenly kingdom and so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out. you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Mysterium Fide. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Kathleen, whom you've called from this world to yourself, Grant that she who is united in your son, with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us. deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant to our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Are you staying? We told Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed.
now begin our communion procession. It is imperative that everyone follows my instruction and that is even if you're not going to communion you need to come out to facilitate safe movement of people. So if you're not coming forward for communion or a blessing simply come forward and pay your respects to Kathleen's remains of the coffin. Everyone will be invited to come down the side aisle when instructed to do so, maintain social distancing and return via the centre aisle. If you're down the front at these far sides, then turn on your Fitbits because you're going to get extra paces in because you need to come down and eventually right up and all the way back round. But please follow the instructions that you've been given to facilitate the communion procession.
Lord God, who left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, may we grant us strengthened by it. Our sister Catherine may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before our final commendation, I'd like to express again my personal sincere condolences. Now, unless you feel very lucky, we've got four minutes to be in Mary Hill. So, hence, I need to encourage you for two reasons. That don't, if you know your way to Mary Hill Crematorium, don't wait for the cortege. Go straight there. And that will allow our funeral directors, Alec Black, to, to get the smaller cortege there quickly. If we delay, we ultimately can lose our slot, but we also can inconvenience another family, and that's the greater crime. Also, I have a statutory obligation to make sure that how you leave and enter the church as you know, we're, the guidance is that we have 20, but it's only guidance and, you know, I can't count. So, but the fact is, if you congregate outside, you create a problem for me. And if you want to blether it so and so, that's fine, but you actually ruin it for everybody else and other families and other funerals. So I need you to exercise some discipline, go straight to your cars or go away because how, how you gather and how we leave places of worship is regulated for and therefore I'm, I know that Ricky is very grateful for, for his exercise and discretion about who attends but that discretion needs to be rewarded by your own discipline about not gathering at the gates and, and, and dispersing with social distancing. It's terrible we have to have these kind of announcements but that's the time that we live in. Dear brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Kathleen. May our farewell express our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we will joyfully meet Kathleen again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Kathleen, your servant, in the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. 
Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Now 